First, set up your edge panels. They give you easy access to things you do most often on your phone with a simple swipe. For example, I have a slide out calculator that I can instantly use. A clipboard manager that retains all images or text that I may have copied in the past. To set up, just slide your edge panel, click on settings and you will see a list of pre-downloaded edge panels that you can use, enable or disable. Or else you can tap on the Galaxy Store and search for something that you use often and you want easy access to. And a lot of times just going through this list gives you a pretty good idea of what you might want so you can just install and display it as an edge panel. Next, set up Samsung Pay. Store your credit card information and use it to make contactless payments pretty much anywhere that you see a credit card swiping machine. And very frankly, Samsung Pay has evolved over the years and it allows you to set up auto payments, connect with your bank account directly and do many more things. And you can call it from pretty much anywhere, whether you're on your always on display screen or on your lock screen, just swipe from the center and you can make that payment. And guys, before we move on, I'm trying to reach 300,000 subscribers and you hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification icon can really help me get there quickly. So it'll mean a lot to me if you could do that. And now let's move on. And by the way, if your country allows you to record calls, you'll see this option in your call settings to set up auto recording of calls. And within auto record, you can decide whether you want to record all calls from unsaved numbers or from specific phone numbers only. And you can just access all your call recordings in one place. Next, if there are certain apps that you use often or you want them to open up right where you left them, you can actually lock them. Go into recent tasks menu and then tap on the icon and then you'll get this option called keep open. And I think this way, the phone allocates dedicated RAM to that specific app so that it never loses where it was and you can quickly call it whenever you need it. But you can do this for only three apps, which I think is still pretty good. And again, if you just launch that app, it's going to open up the fastest as compared to any other app. Always on display. It's super useful for me. At a glance, without touching my phone, I can see what notifications have come and if it's even important for me to pick up my phone. But as the name suggests, always on display is not set to show always. And so if you swipe down your notification tray, go into settings and tap on the text always on display, you can see that it's set to show always for me. And that's probably something you'd want to do too. Over time, your app drawer can become a very difficult place for you to actually find the app that you need. And quite often, there are a ton of apps that you don't even require to be present full time. So long press on your home screen, go into settings and tap on hide apps. And now you can select apps that you know for a fact you almost never use or they're just adding to the clutter. So apps that you know you never use, apps that your carrier puts in or even Samsung apps that you may never use, you can just hide them and keep your app drawer neater. Now this might not be for everyone, but there's a hidden space in your phone which is called secure folder and you need to set it up to activate it. You'll see it in the setting toggles in your notification tray, tap on it and set it up using your biometric and a pin. And only you can access this, of course, if anyone else knew the pin, then that's another thing. And just think of this as your private space. Anything that you do here is only visible to you and not to anyone else. And you can add pretty much any other app that you have installed on your phone otherwise and have your private session. So think of this as your own private basement. And you can move any content from your regular zone to this private zone and keep it safe and secure. You should also go into settings and then into digital well-being to set up focus modes, which is like D&D, &D, but with some context. For example, I've set up work time, wherein I can use only work specific apps as defined by me, and I don't get notifications from any other apps that are not included in the list. And I can also set how long that focus mode should last for. Activating a focus mode is simple. Swipe down your notification panel, look for focus mode and select the focus mode that you want to activate. And now you'll see that you can only work with apps that you had selected and you will only get notifications from those apps. You can set up many more focus modes like sleep time or exercise or cinema hall and just activate them when you get into that context. Pretty simple. Next, notifications. Probably the most frequent thing that happens on your phone. You need to manage that better. Switch over to detailed notifications so you can see more info when a notification appears on your screen. Then go to advanced settings and turn on notification reminders for apps that are important to you like work apps such as email or Slack or missed phone calls, for example. It's totally your choice. And you can set your phone to buzz every 5, 10 or 15 minutes unless you dismiss it. Turn on app icon badges to show how many notifications are pending on an app. For example, I have two on WhatsApp and I can just long press it to see what those notifications are. 
You can also maintain notification history by going into advanced settings and then just turning it on. And how often does the notification area on the top left corner get clogged with app icons? You can manage that better. So go into advanced settings and you can tap on show notification icons and set the display of notifications to show, let's say the three most recent or just a number of notifications. So you get, you get like just a number on the top left corner. You can choose to see no notifications and keep it really nice and clean, but I prefer three most recent and that's also the default setting your phone comes with. Next, go into notifications and set up your edge lighting style for every time you get a notification. They look really good whether your screen is turned on or turned off. And there are quite a few styles to choose from. And so you can just browse through them and try them on and see which one works for you. You can also set the color. I typically choose app color, so that's automated. And then you can also choose the stroke width and the duration of that particular pop-up. And that's it guys, those were 10 things that I think you should set up when you get your new Galaxy S21, S21 Plus or the S21 Ultra. I hope this was super useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.